Hello everybody, we are coming to you live from Hopkins Academy. This is Hadley Media, and I am uh, Andy Morris Friedman. Uh, I don't know if anybody is watching, but if you are, you should come down here, because live is better than television. Hi there. You have a question for me? Is it something you want to go out over the air on television? We'll be back after this short, uh, brief break. Watching, come on down. Live is better than on television. Excuse me, what number were you? 71. Okay, so uh, 30, 29 more to go. Any uh, issues in town meeting, uh, especially of interest to you tonight? Uh, just the uh, marijuana growing uh, questions are the issues, I think, they're on the agenda. Want to give us a preview of your thoughts? Uh, well, I, I think the issue uh, that's going to be discussed this evening is around uh, growing and processing marijuana um, in a residential uh, part of the town, although it's zoned as agricultural residential. So I think we're going to be looking for an exception or at least uh, perhaps to postpone it until the spring um, town meeting. Okay, well, good luck. Uh, what inning do you think the Red Sox will be in when town meeting finishes? I'm sorry? What inning do you think the Red Sox uh, Fifth inning. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite place in Hadley? Uh, the Hadley Diner on Route 9. Okay. Or I guess it's actually Johnny's now. Okay, thanks. All right. Hi there. What number are you? 78 and 79. Okay. Any... Uh, particular issues that town meeting tonight you're interested in? I'd rather not say right now. You'd rather not say. All right. Well, we'll find out. Thank you. Hey, Richard. Hey there. What number are you? 81. 81. to 100. If you're not here, you should come on down. Live is better than television. Hey there, what number are you? 65. Oh, 65, you were here early. Is there any particular uh, issue in town meeting you're interested in? Yeah, aren't you Andy? You're the chess, the chess guy. My son does chess with you, or did chess with you. Um, we're here about the marijuana grow by law. You want to give us a preview of your thoughts? No. <laughs> okay, well, you know, we're going to start chess club again in January. So, uh, right, right, but at the Hadley Library, so, uh, so we can check it out. Okay, we are getting there. Hi there. Hey, what number are you? 87. Have any uh, particular issues in town meeting you want to talk about? He's got to watch his cable, though. Maybe I should get him another XLR. I think I have one. Hey there. Oh, you're 65. You got here early. No, we're up to like 86. <laughs> 86 is pretty close. Hey, Tim. Okay. How are the cookies? Good. Come on down, get cookies from the Mother's Club. Hey, what number are you? What number? Oh, 101. Woohoo! We made it! Okay, town meeting can go on. We've reached 100 people. 
Hi there. We're, we're killing time on television before town meeting starts. I'm sorry. We're killing time on the television before the town meeting actually starts. How are things on building committee? Uh, slow. We, uh, we need to schedule a meeting. Any issues at town meeting um, you're especially interested in tonight? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, just doing my part. Hi. Uh, what inning do you think the Red Sox will be in when town meeting finishes? Uh, I think we might be done. Think so? Oh, well, we'll have to see. Uh, what's your favorite place in Hadley? Oh, uh, geez. There's too many. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, thanks. Any particular issues at tonight in town meeting you're interested in? Uh, no, just speed up so I can get home for dessert. <laughs> Well, thanks. All right. We should be beginning shortly. I know I keep saying that. We will uh, kick it over to the upstairs broadcast booth as soon as town meeting starts. You don't want to miss a single exciting moment. Don't worry, Ginger. I'm not going to ask to interview you. <laughs> I know better. I'm going to pretend I didn't see you. <laughs> All right. Well, what number were you? Number am I? What number person? You're not? Oh, you're not? Well, I'm sure you're still a good person. I have something on the agenda here with my salary. I can bring my laptop and go downstairs. Right now, I'm... All right, well, good luck. Well, we'll have to see how that works out. Okay, it looks like Brian is ready to start. So uh, we will kick it on over. Have a good town meeting, everybody. Every town meeting without a fist fight is a good one. And we'll see how good this one turns out to be. Thank you, Ben. Welcome, everyone. Um, there's a few more people coming in while they're getting their seats. I, will, I have an announcement to make, and it's from the Hadley Mothers Club, and it's a nicotine addiction. It's sponsored by the Mothers Club. It's going to be on October 24th, 7 to 8.30, um, here at Hopkins Academy. And it's about vaping, nicotine, and other substances. So it's being sponsored by the Mothers Club, and we thank them for that. And they just wanted everybody to know that. Welcome, everyone. Today is October 18th of 2018. And this is the special town meeting. The warrant has been signed, posted, and disseminated. And at this time, I will go over some ground rules before I call the meeting to order. First of all, we have two microphones up in the front. If you wish to speak to a motion or article, please approach the microphone. I ask that you propose the question to me, the moderator, not to an individual. I'm also going to try and keep the time limit uh, for each person speaking to around three minutes. And I ask that you not speak a second time to a motion or article until everyone has had a chance to speak. So at this time, I will introduce the two head tables up here. Starting on my left, Selectman Waskevitz, Selectman Phil. Select woman um, Keegan, Chairwoman uh, Chungle, Selectman Stanley, uh, Town Attorney Joel Bard, on my right, uh, Town Clerk Jess Spankabel, uh, Chair of the Finance Committee Amy Fiden, Miss Kathy Zaturka, Miss Valerie Hood, and sitting to my far right is Town Administrator David Nixon. So at this time, I would like everyone to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. 
I Thank you very much. Article 1. What's that? Can I get a head count on how many we have here? Thank you. Article, Article 1. Um, it's a lengthy article. It's for the annual uh, budget adjustments. So I will give everybody, everybody a few minutes to read through it. And then I will read the motion. <laughs> article one was uh, passed in favor by the select board five to zero. And it was supported in favor. Uh, Finance committee recommends three zero. It will be a two-thirds majority. So the motion for Article 1 reads, move that the town adjust the fiscal 2019 budget as delineated in Article 1 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18, 2018, and incorporated by references herein. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Motion has been moved and seconded. I will call on uh, Town Administrator David Nixon. Good, e <clears throat> Good evening. This article makes the final adjustments to FY19 budget. Uh, two things to point out is that the, balance, the budget is balanced and it preserves all the services that we voted upon at the annual town meeting. So what we agreed to do at the annual town meeting is preserved here. This budget change, this, the changes relate to four different things here. The first is pay for the union employees at the time of the annual town meeting, we have not completed our negotiations, so the, the, the union employees are now paid through this budget. The second is the non-union employees get a 2% COLA. The third is housekeeping adjustments such as the insurance line um, and the debt and conservation commission. And then finally, the final adjustments are for new information received after the annual town meeting such as property and liability insurance and workers' compensation. Are there any questions? Edwin Montusco, 116 Stockbridge Street. Um, I was under the impression that uh, from the, the appropriate uh, uh, sum of money from the sewer receipts, the water receipts, the sewer reserve and water reserve, that those monies were to be set aside for those projects. That's yes. correct. So those monies are going for water and sewer uh, operations. Improvements to the systems or just to run the department? Running the department and there are some uh, uh, improvements to the system which are routine such as water valve replacement, uh, I and I work at the sewer department. There are some capital articles which are coming up in Article 6, which will relate to the sewer system and water system as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. If there isn't any further discussion, I'll take a vote. Once again, it's a two-thirds majority. All in favor of Article 1, I'll read, I'll read the motion one final time, just so everybody's clear. Move that the town adjust the fiscal 2019 budget as delineated in Article 1 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant 
for October 18th and incorporated by references herein. All in favor, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Do we have any abstentions? <coughs> Motion passes 135 to 1. Article 2. Article 2 deals with revolving funds. Once again, I will read it. Article 2 reads, to see if the town will vote to amend section 86-9, Article 5 of the Chapter 86, Code of the Town of Heaven, related to revolving funds, pursuant to the provisions of General Law C-44, I don't know what that symbol means, 53 E and a half, by adding the following. So, description, after school program, Department is to park and rec. Purpose is to support children's recreational programs and personnel associated with program enrollment. Source of the funds is gonna be fees associated with hosting and administering children's recreational programs. Annual expense allowed is 45,000. Maximum allowable balance at year end on June 30th is 20,000. This article was recommended by the Finance Committee 3 to 0 and the Select Board 5 to 0. The motion for this article reads, move that the town adjust the accounts as printed in the warrant as delineated in Article 2 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18th, 2018 and incorporated by references herein. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Motion's been moved and seconded. Once again, Town Administrator David Nixon will speak to this. This article establishes one more revolving account for the Park and Rec Commission, particularly for us uh, directed towards after school programs for uh, programs that were formerly supported by Hadley Kids Incorporated. Uh, all the planned Fees are going to cover all the plans and expenses, so there's no impact on the tax rate. There is going to be a follow-up article related to this uh, at the annual town meeting, so this is the first of two steps associated with this project. Do we have any questions for the motion for Article 2? Seeing none, once again, all in favor, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. So Article 2 is going to pass 135-0 with one abstention. Thank you. Moving along, Article 3. Fund balances. Article 3, as you can see, there's quite a few special town meetings and annual town meetings where there was articles that were voted and there's balances associated with those and I'll let you read through them I would like to make a note that if you look in the second box there from annual town meeting 2014 the fire truck pumper uh, for 761,250 that is being deleted we are not going to vote on that tonight and I'll read that into the motion but just to give you the heads up that is being deleted out of that article So, the motion, the motion for Article 3, move that the town adjust the accounts 
as printed in the warrant as delineated in Article 4 of the Special Town. Three, that's a typo. Article 3, the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18, and incorporated by the references herein. And there's also moved that the town amend Article 3 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18, 2018, by deleting the reference to borrowing authorization for the fire truck pump. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? second? Article has been moved and seconded. I would like to call on Chairwoman Trouble to answer any questions. This is a housekeeping article that does two things. Its first purpose is to clean up old balances left over in a number of articles where the project is done and any money remaining is unproductive. Funds are being returned back to the source from which they were appropriated. The second purpose is to amend an old borrowing authorization where borrowing was approved, but the amount actually needed was less. When we have an excess borrowing, in these old articles, we are required to report annually to the Massachusetts Department of Revenue and the Federal Securities Exchange Commission any unproductive balances. There is no impact on our taxes. So, so the summary of transfers, capital stabilization will be $22,300.52, water reserves $4,700, sewer reserves $4,700, Sewer impact account $744.20. Community Preservation Act $83,500. The other one was to the other article, so not that one. Okay, and Article 3 was recommended uh, 3 to 0 by the Finance Committee and 5 0 by the Select Board. Because it deals with stabilization, it will be a two thirds majority. No, I think I moved it that way so we don't have to vote the amendment. So if there isn't any questions or concerns, I will ask that if you're in favor of Article 3, you signify with your red card. Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions? Article 3 passes 135 to 1 with no abstentions. Article 4 reads, to see if the town will vote to transfer from sewer impact fees $80,000 to sewer reserves for expenses related to an emergency sewer line repairs or take any action relative thereto. This was voted by the select board. Select board recommends it 4-0 with one abstention. Finance committee recommends it 3-0. The motion reads, move that the town transfer from sewer impact fees $80,000 to sewer reserves for expenses related to emergency sewer line repairs. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. At this time, I will call on Select and Phil. So as most people are aware, this past summer, um, we discovered some work on the sewer lines on Route 9 that required some emergency repairs. Uh, the good news is we were able to save several hundred thousand dollars by lining them in place, but we did have to pay for the, the work quickly and get it done before it became a larger issue. So we spent $80,000 on the sewer reserves uh, to cover that work, and so what we're doing is we're $80,000 back into the sewer reserves. Any further questions relating to Article 4? 
Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions. Article 4 passes unanimously. Article 5. Article 5 reads, to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash $29,952 into the capital stabilization fund or take any action relative thereto. Article 5 was recommended by the select board 4 to 1 with no abstentions. It is recommended by the finance committee 3 to 0 with no abstentions. The motion for Article 5 reads, move that the town transfer from free cash $29,952 into the capital stabilization fund. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. I will call on Selectman Stanley to speak to this article. Good evening. Uh, this article transfers available free cash to the capital stabilization account to fund part of the capital plan in the next article. There is no impact on taxes for this article. Current balance in capital stabilization is $5,759. The transfer that was approved in Article 3 is $22,300, plus transfer from free cash for this article is $29,952 making for a total balance of 58 11. Are there any questions? Thank you. What's that? Yeah, it was already moved in a second. Thank you. Any questions or concerns? Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I'm just curious um, about this. Could somebody speak to why they do this and somebody who opposed it speak why they voted against it? So you want one forum and one person to speak against it also? Well, so, no, no, no. I mean, I'm just curious, you know, what's the advantage? I guess we're just trying to increase our capital stabilization. I'm pretty interested in why the person who voted against it voted against it. Okay. The dissenting vote on the select board. It's an abstention. No, it wasn't. No, it was an abstention. Oh, on this one, it was an abstention. Sorry. I was reading ahead of the five. Oh. No. It was the other five. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I'll give you a few minutes.
lot of individual points here, so I'm just going to go through them and then ask for questions for each one so that we can kind of keep it together. And if there are no questions, let's move on to the next one. Um, the first, number one, assessor software and hardware upgrades are necessary to perform assessing functions in the next year. Uh, this is an upgrade to the current assessor software and one that they need to do because uh, the current version is outdated within a year, so they need to upgrade the, soft, uh, upgrade the software. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay. Uh, next one is the police department um, evidence locker, and this is an upgrade to their current evidence locker, and will add to security and overall uh, safety, security of the evidence stored at the public safety complex. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, uh, next one, number three. Uh, the select board asks that the employee classification and compensation plan be reviewed and updated. Uh, this has been done internally a couple of times since I believe, what was it, 2001 was the last one was adopted, David? 1998 was the last time this was kind of reviewed and adopted by the town. So um, we're hoping this will kind of be a new benchmark for employee classification and compensation um, and will be done by a third party as opposed to being done within the town. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, number four, the gable ends of the DPW garage uh, need to be repaired. This helps protect the mechanic shop and store the equipment, vehicles, tools, and supplies. That's about all I know on that one. Do you have any questions on that? Okay. Uh, this highway garage here, this DPW thing, what do we, which one are you on? The classification? No, the gable end, ends of the DPW. Well, why are you taking sewer reserves? Is that any of that money on the sewer impact fee? Because you transferred money from the sewer impact into sewer reserves. Sewer yeah. impact is specifically... It's not impact, it's just the reserves. Yeah, but you, before you transferred money from sewer impact to reserves, I don't know what's happening with that. That was Article 4, we transferred sewer impact, but that was to pay for the repairs of the sewer line that was done last year. Right. That doesn't have to do with this, this article. But there's absolutely no impact fee to be used in the repairs. I believe not. I, I hope yes, not. Yes. No, no impact fees in that. No. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, number five is sewer line along Route 9 need to be surveyed to assess the need for future repair or replacement. Uh, this is a plan that the past DPW director wanted to put into place where we allocate a certain amount of funds every year to inspect the sewer lines throughout town. Um, these are some of the most uh, higher priority lines to inspect and the similar inspection last year saved the town a lot of money the, the article we just did. They were able to line the pipes in place as opposed to excavating and putting in new pipes. So hoping that this plan will be able will allow us to line pipes throughout the town instead of have to perform emergency repairs. You have a question on that? Well, not on that specific one. So let's wait till the end. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. So maybe oh, you I need to state your name. Oh, this is Middle Street, Hadley. Um, it's probably a stupid question, but why? would Route 9 infrastructure that benefits all of us in the town be subsidized by just people who are on water or sewer? Why isn't it something that's funded <coughs> town-wide? Yeah, this, this is paid for from sewer reserves. Right, and where so is the sewer that, reserve money coming from? That comes from people paying for the sewer. Right, yeah. so what percentage of town people are on sewer? It's a low percentage, yeah. Correct, so the low percentage that's on sewer is paying for infrastructure on Route 9. 
for the whole time. Do I understand that correctly? The users of the sewer are paying for that infrastructure. For the whole town. Well, they're the only ones using the sewer. Really? <laughs> so everybody that's on Route 9, all the businesses that are on Route 9, that aren't tax, that aren't the sewer users, that, what is, is it like 10%? I don't even know what the percentage is. They all are sewer users. On Route 9, yes, yeah. but so, I don't ever understand why infrastructure is always on sewer or water instead of town-wide. Does anybody? The, this, so the alternative would be for your property taxes or whatever to go pay for the sewer line that's but on that the line. But that would push it through the whole town instead of just on people who are on sewer and water. It's just a, red, uh, just a question. I've never really. Yeah. Kind of understood. Okay, in the six years I've been here, we've had this discussion, and because of the businesses and the amount they do pay, yeah. uh, we we have been mulling it around quite a few times over the last six years whether to take some of these major infrastructure problems that we are having and take it out of taxation. So, in the near future, we may at some point. Uh, decide to take some of this repair work on the water and on the sewer side uh, if we can't get grant money for it to take it out of taxation because of the uh, amount of money that's being depleted from the water and the sewer rates. Does that explain a little yep. bit better? Yep. Okay. So looking into it. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to speak to that. I was previous sewer commissioner. We put together, I was actually the author of the sewer impact fee. And the sewer impact fee was to subsidize uh, the sewer system and how that worked was any new uh, business or residential would pay an impact. So that would lessen the payment from the sewer users. And everyone in the town is not on sewer. I mean, I asked back when I was sewer commission years ago for money from the town to upgrade the sewer mainline because the sewer mainline on Route 9 that the businesses uh, use and monies that they pay generate a lot of tax revenue and originally that sewer line was put in there to develop the, the area there for businesses. but. Sewer users are going to end up, the way things are going, they're going to be paying more for sewer and water than their uh, real estate taxes. That's, that's where it's all going. I just, I want to get us back on track to talk about, um, you know, sewer impact fees or, or, you know, infrastructure upgrades. That really isn't pertaining to the motion that we're discussing right now. That's a bigger picture discussion that we'd like to have. So I'd really like to keep us focused on the current motion. Go, go ahead. Well, Dave Wiskevitz, 126 Mill. Um, just reiterating what the previous speaker was trying to say. Basically, everybody benefits from this the taxes in town, and 10% uh, uh, are paying for the improvements to benefit everybody. So that's one of those things that should probably be looked at when it's infrastructure that everybody benefits from, even though you don't get the sewer benefit, you're benefiting from the taxes by allowing development in that area. So that was the point of the previous okay. Thank you. I'm going to move on. And you're waiting until the end? Uh, survey. Okay. Number six. Uh, the approaches and roadways to the water tanks need to be cleared and made accessible. Um, these are the big water tanks in town that haven't been cleared in a while and just want to maintain that road. I don't know if there are any questions on that. Thank you. 
Nina Pollard, Ted and Quest do. Are those on Mount Warner? Yeah, they're the ones on Mount Warner. But I'm up there every day and it's clear. And then I'm just wondering why they're saying $25,000 to clear access. It's already clear. I mean, I may not be not quite. There's another two. There's one on Mount Hoyle. Okay, those I don't know about. But I know Is that the one they're talking about, John? I thought it was the one on Mount Warner. Two on Mount Warner and one on, one on Mount Holyoke, and it was clear, unfortunately. But um, it, it's also that um, DCR has kept it clear, so I'm just wondering why we have $25,000 for a roadway that's clear up to the point of the, green, the two green wells. Yeah, and I don't know the condition of the road on the Mount Holyoke wells. Yeah, those are not, but those. And, and I think it's make, making sure that road is easily accessible because I know there's possibly in a few years we're going to have to rewind the tanks and do a bunch of work on them. So that, it's yeah, kind of in preparation the, for that. But the road is already, I mean, it gets a little swampy, but it's accessible. It's real steep on the lighter side. Yeah. Quite, quite deep wash on it. I mean, if it's, if it's during the, a really muddy season, it would be a lot of rain. Well, like I said, we're up there almost every day, and it's pretty quick. But All right. Thank you. Um, next one is from the water. Uh, the number one at Callahan Wells needs to be upgraded or repaired in order to preserve water quality. This is a scheduled procedure. Um, this is kind of a regular maintenance item that's in the capital plan. Any questions on that? Uh, number eight for Hadley Media as part of a library and senior center project. Hadley Media will need to be moved and reconnected to the cable television network. That's what those expenses are for. Any cool? And it's coming out of the Hadley Media reserves. Any question on that? Uh, then the final one here is the upstairs HVAC system at the public safety complex needs repair and upgrades in order to function properly. Um, this has been an ongoing issue. The building's 25 years old and just a maintenance item that needs to be addressed. 20 years old. Thank you. Any questions on that? Andy Morris, Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Could you please give us the current balances on the reserve funds that we're spending this money from and what the total amount of spending will do to the new, uh, what, what the new balance will be after the spending? Yeah, us, Dave. Okay, so do you have any ending results? For page two. So yeah, sewer receipts is nine seventy seven nine zero three. Water receipts one twenty four one fifty five. Oh, one million two hundred forty five thousand one hundred fifty five. Sorry, uh, sewer reserves one hundred forty eight thousand nine hundred forty one. Water reserves ten thousand. Is that? Oh, All right, sorry. Sewer impact is two twenty four. 181.86. So that's the current balance. And there are no expenses here out of sewer impact. Um, stabilization is two million one hundred three thousand one hundred sixty nine dollars and twenty cents. Um, I can do the math here. 
no capital stabilization? No, that's later, okay. Um, water stabilization, $53,374.25. I think the current balances will be enough. You don't okay. have to- Okay, you don't want to have math. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Um, capital stabilization, $5,761.39. OPEB is $1,157,533.79. CPA unallocated is $1,782,697.81. Water reserves, $1,177,447. Sewer reserves is $313,058. Cable reserves, $219,926. Anything else? Right. Any more questions about any of those nine items? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Opposed? One. Abstentions? None. So, motion 6A passes 136 to 1 with one abstention. Moving on, the motion for 6B is for the staff car. This is going to be borrowing within the levy. And there was a change last night at the select board meeting. And so I'm going to read the change into the motion. The motion reads, move that the town appropriate $30,000 to pay the cost of the vehicle for the building inspector, including the payment of all costs incidental and re related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 71 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of insurance, issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Motion has been moved and seconded, and once again, I will call on Selectman Stanley. Oh, sorry. Um, this article here was approved 5-0 by the Select Board and was recommended 2-4, one against by the Finance Committee. So this motion is now to borrow for a new vehicle for staff and building inspector use. The current vehicle is a 2002 Grand Marquis. Um, it's in a little rough shape right now. Uh, this is a planned replacement that's been in planning for quite some time, but hasn't been yet to the stage where it's been approved. And borrowing for this will be within the levy. So there is no impact on taxes. Any questions? Just what does the building inspector's uh, office generate in funds? I don't know that number off the top of my head. Do we have that, David? Building inspector's office, what do they generate in funds? They generate above $100,000 annually. Can people please use the mic for that? Above $100,000 annually? 
So if the building inspector generates $100,000, why is the taxpayers paying to borrow money when he generates this money? His fees go into the general fund. But so I mean, this comes out of that. Why, why isn't it that that fund doesn't buy a vehicle and, and it comes out of taxes? He doesn't have any revolving fund or anything like that to be able to keep money from year to year. That's how this looks like to me, you guys rob Peter to pay Paul all the time. Anyone else? Once again, because this is borrowing within the levy, it will be a two-thirds majority. All in favor, signify with your red card. Thank you. Opposed? Thank you. Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes 131 to 7 with zero abstentions. Motion 6C is for a police cruiser, I believe. Motion reads, move that the town appropriate 47,000 to pay the cost of a cruiser for the police department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 71 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote Lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of the issuance of any such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Once again, um, this was approved 5-0 by the select board and 3-0 by the finance committee. And I will once again call on Selectman Stan. Uh, <clears throat> this motion borrows to pay for a new planned uh, police cruiser uh, replacement. Uh, and borrowing for this will be within the levy. I don't know if there are any questions. It's a straightforward replacement. How many cruises does Abby own now? I'd have to refer to the Public Safety Department for that. I don't know off the top of my head. Is this new cruiser replacing the old cruiser? Yes, it is. What's happening to the old cruiser? I am not sure, but I believe that the cruiser it's replacing is, is not. I'd have to double check. Well, I, I look at there, there's a lot of old cruisers there. No, I don't know if you guys are starting a junkyard here or what you're doing. But if the, cru the cruiser is no good, get it the hell out of the town. Not be accumulating all this cruisers. How many cruisers do you have? Uh, the chief can address it. <laughs> so the, the junky cruisers that you see in the back, um, I know people drive by and they see them sitting in the back lot. Um, yes, they are old, they are junky cruisers. The reason that we keep them is for detail cars. They are not usable patrol vehicles. We keep them to keep idle hours off of our good cars to make them last longer. I put a few bullet points together. I may be able to answer some folks' questions right now um, by going through these if you, if you want me to. But yeah, they, the, the old cruisers that you see in the back, if, if they get to the point where we just can't keep them running anymore, we, we usually get rid of them. We'll donate them to different schools so they can use them in their auto body departments, um, or we will just completely junk them. Uh, but we have purchased cars uh, used, we have purchased, uh, we've gotten grants for cars and things like that, just to keep our fleet uh, lasting longer and, 
in the best possible condition. But yes, those cruisers that you see along the back, those are not usable cars. We keep them just for details. Chief, so, yeah. how, how many? We have, uh, maybe you have a number? 12. 12. Those detail cars. How many cops do you have? 12. 15 full-time police officers. We have three uh, patrols. That's one of the bullet points. We have three patrols every day now. We've added police officers over the course of the last several years. So that's three cruisers that have to drive every day. We cannot run them 24 hours a day. If we ran cruisers 24 hours a day, we'd be replacing the entire fleet every two or three years or something like that. So we stagger them and we have to continue to purchase cars in order to keep them going. Several years ago, uh, Chief Huckowitz sat down with the Capitol Committee and when they pulled, there used to be a single cruiser in every uh, operational budget. They decided to pull that out and start to put it into capital. When they did that, they went over the entire state of the cruiser fleet. How many officers there were, how many shifts there were driving, how many miles go on per year, and they took a lot of time and effort to figure that out. What they determined was that they were so far behind in keeping cruisers in good working order that for the foreseeable future, they were going to buy one car guaranteed every single year, and every other year they were going to buy two because they had so much catch up to do. That sentiment has been echoed by every capital committee that I have been to since I have been chief because each and every year, <coughs> uh, Mitch and I, Mitch was assigned as the cruiser fleet officer by Chief Huckowitz, so he has been doing this for several years now. Each and every year, we bring the capital committee a new PowerPoint with every cruiser we own, the mileage of every car, the maintenance that goes into them, and every year they agree that this is, this was every year they have agreed so far that this is the schedule that we should maintain. We are currently in a position because of the grants that we've gotten, because of the fundraising that we've done to buy different cars, and because of the used vehicles that we purchased from other departments to fill in gaps where we have cruisers die on us, we're currently in a position where we no longer need to buy two cars every other year. We can, we can, but we must, we have to still continue to buy a single car. We put approximately 20 to 25,000 miles on a car each and every year. And as I said, we have three officers regularly on patrol each and every shift. On the weekends, we have up to four or five. So we have to have at least four or five cruisers available almost at all times. And like I said, the detail cars that we keep, keep the other cars lasting longer. The last thing we want is to end up paying more in maintenance costs to keep these cars alive uh, than the car is actually worth. So when we hit that point, that's when it goes. But the cars that you see in the back are detail cars. With the purchase of this cruiser, we are going to be able to get rid of three, John. They're going to go. Um, so, just and just to give you an idea of the ones that we're going to be getting rid of, how long we've been able to keep them going, they are our last two of them, are our last two Crown Victorias. They don't even make them anymore. So, uh, they're seven years old, I believe. When I took over, we were driving cars that had upwards of 160 to 170,000 miles on them responding to calls in those cars. For those of you who know anything about accreditation, um, accredited police departments get rid of their cars when they tick 79,999 miles. 80,000 miles, they're gone. We were running cars with 170. Um, we don't want to do that anymore. We're not going with 80, we're not going that far, but we are trying to keep within a reasonable mileage to make sure that the value of the car, we're not spending too much on maintenance, and we can keep them going so that we can get the calls. Thank you, Chief. Um, Selectman Phil would also like to speak to this, and then... So I saw some confused looks about the term detail, and uh, if you, many mornings along Route 9, you'll see several police cars with construction crews, and those are generally the details that they're talking about, where a police car may not be in good enough shape where an officer is on patrol, one, 
it's to you know have his life depend on that car. It's good enough to have lights running and just be sitting there idling at a construction site during the day. And those details also bring in revenue for the police department as well with hourly fees that the officers are paid through contractors and other, other sources as well. So detailed cars don't have to be the greatest, but as long as they still run, they're good enough to run lights and to sit there at a construction site. And every, de every detail also brings in 10% uh, administrative fee to the town as well. Um, the cars we run, as John pointed out, they are they are bad. We had one that actually lit on fire, I think, twice in one year. <laughs> um, but uh, quickly put out and no injuries. So. <laughs> I'm Linda Sanders and I'm town treasurer. Um, this is for the moderator and select board uh, Stanley. If when you leave the uh, motions, you can also give the recommendation of the capital planning committee. You're giving them for the select board and the finance, but for borrowing, I also need the recommendation of the capital planning. I don't have planning. it, but if I have it, I will. Okay, no, it is in the regular warrant, but I, I, if it could be read as well, then it will be in the minutes. All right. I need that for the borrowing. Thank you. Any other questions about the police cruiser? <laughs> Linda, back on the on the front page, I did I thought I read that it was supported four zero by Capital Planning Committee. I may not have, but and that will apply to all the Yes. Thank you. Um, once again, any, uh, seeing none, all in favor of motion 6C for the new police cruiser, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Opposed? Thank you. Abstentions? 6C passes 137 to 1 with no abstentions. Motion 6D, skid unit, once again, barring within the levy. Move that the town appropriate 31,000 to pay the cost of acquiring a skid unit for the use of the fire department, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7, 1 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, provided however that the vote taken here under shall be expressly contingent upon the approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the prop provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so called. Any premiums received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of cost approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I? Yes. There's been a mistake. Shot. Give it all of that. Thanks, Craig. All right, I'll be reading. Mm -hmm. Disregard what I just said. I will reread the motion for 6D. Move that the town appropriate 31000 to pay any costs of acquiring a skid unit for the use of the fire department, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 71 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore, so called. 
Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of the issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Once again, I will call on Selectman Stanley. I think I'm going to call on the fire chief just to explain this. If he doesn't mind, uh, just because I know this is for some modifications to a, a brush truck, but I'm going to hack it apart uh, in comparison to his explanation. So I'll let him explain. This is actually for the purchase of a vehicle and a skid unit uh, to replace our 1994 F-350 that you may have seen parked at the station that has a blown transmission. It was a vehicle received for free from the state um, under the excess property uh, program that will be going into auction. Um, we were hoping to get a few, few more years out of it. Unfortunately, the cost to fix it, um, it's, it's too high for the 19, uh, 1994. Um, we switched that out from our 1952 brush truck that just went to auction. So we had moved all the stuff into the Ford F-350 1994, which the transmission, or the transmission blew. So this is for a used uh, pickup and the skid unit that goes into it. A skid unit basically, so if we have another uh, brush fire on the mountain, we can actually get up the mountain. With this pickup truck, it has, it'll probably have around 250 to 500 gallons of water, a foam cell in it, hose reel, basically just slides into the back of the truck. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Seeing no questions, all in favor of 6D, please raise your red card. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6D passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving on. 6E, DPW dump truck. Move that the town appropriate 85,000 to pay the cost of acquiring an F550 dump truck for the use of the highway division of the Department of Public Works including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7-1 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Provided, however, that the vote taken Hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon the approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2.5, so called. Any such premium re received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Once again, I will call on Selectman Stanley. So uh, this motion will require, even if it passes tonight, will require a vote that will be scheduled at a later date to approve the purchase. Um, this is uh, for a new dump truck for the Highway Division of the Department of Public Works. It's a plan replacement and upgrade. Borrowing will be outside the levy. That requires the next vote, another vote. Um, the impact on taxes is two cents per thousand. It will cost the average single family home $6.34 per year. This does replace the oldest truck currently in the fleet, number 19. 
which is a 2001 F350 with 102,000 miles. Um, these trucks are the workhorse, so to speak, of the DPW and are used every day of the year, whether it's plowing snow or uh, maintaining roads and such in the summertime. Any questions? How many 550s does the highway department own? John, do you know off the top of your head? Not at the top of the head. I want to know the figure. <laughs> How many? Hey, do you know the number? I believe four or five right now. And because of the GVW, the trucks, we've been replacing the F-250s, the F-350s, and I think we have one F-450 with the 550s, so they can carry a little bit more weight. What's the largest trucks you guys got there? Ten wheeler. Uh, ten wheelers, largest one, and that one's Jesus. That thing's probably already ten years old. Right. Why are you invested in these little tinker toys when you're hauling material in and out? You're hauling with wheelbarrows. Why don't you invest? It all, it all depends on the job, John. If we need a bigger truck, we use a bigger truck. If we need a smaller truck, we use a smaller well, truck. Well, you, you seem to be buying all these little small toys. Could I remind everyone to please frame questions to me, the moderator, and then so we don't have a back and forth to keep an orderly fashion. Edwin. Yes, dear. Um, <laughs> just to clarify things, this 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 motion will be uh, proposition two and a half override. Yes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. I just want to clarify. All right. Any other any other questions for six e? Seeing none. All in favor, please signify with the red card. Thank you. Opposed. Abstentions. 6E passes 136 to 2 with no abstentions. Motion 6F, school equipment. Move that the town appropriate 55400 to pay the cost of replacing cafeteria equipment for the school department, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto. That to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7.1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Provided, however, that the vote taken hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon the approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium to to the payment of the cost of the issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by the like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Once again, this will require a ballot vote for two and a half, and I'll call on Select and Stanley. This uh, motion is to pay for new cafeteria equipment at Hopkins Academy. Um, I believe it's primarily a freezer replacement, and I can have Chris uh, address any questions in the back if you would like more specifics. I don't know, Chris, do you want to say something real quick? Um, this is a planned replacement and upgrade. Borrowing will be outside of the levy, so if this is approved tonight, it'll go to another uh, ballot vote. Uh, the impact on taxes is 1.3 cents per thousand, and will cost the average single family home $4.18 per year. Chris, go ahead. Sure. Um, the freezer and coolers in Hopkins, the freezer is rusted through, and so the floor 
basically has no floor. Um, the cooler, the positioning of the two um, freezer and cooler, you have to move the cooler to get at the freezer. So they decided we should probably just replace both of them at the same time, which seems to be a good idea. We just lost a whole cooler full of vegetables uh, when they froze. So at this point in time, the equipment is just failing. It's just time for uh, you know, a new cooler and freezer. These are the walk-in units. They're not just a small refrigerator. Are these the original? I don't know, but they're very old. You do know that. Chris, why don't you introduce yourself for anybody who doesn't know who you are and what you do? Uh, I am the business manager of the school district, so I handle the school's finances. Thank you. Any questions for motion 6F? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with your red card. Opposed? Thank you. Abstentions? Article 6F passes 137 to 1 with zero abstentions. Thank you. 6G, once again, it's a school department with, and it's going to be within the level Levy borrowing. Move that the town appropriate $98,000 to pay costs of health and security upgrades for the school department, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 7, 1 of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority to the issuance of bonds or notes of, of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of the issuance of any such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44 section 20 of the general laws thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. Once again, I will call on Selectman Stanley. Uh, this motion is to borrow to pay for new security and health upgrades at both the elementary school and Hopkins Academy. Uh, borrowing for this will be within the levy and there are no impact on taxes. Um, given today's time, uh, just there's been some needs identified to improve safety um, in the school and security, and so these are upgrades to address those needs. Um, and uh, that's about all I want to say on it. I don't know if there are questions. Maybe folks from the school can answer questions about this further. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none. Oh. Uh, Tony Five and Cold Spring Lane. I just uh, we don't have any specifics here, even general general information. I know that maybe you can't go into great detail, but um, it's, it's a lot of money to spend with no specifics. To my other part of the question was, uh, as this was being developed, was the uh, was Chief Mason uh, consulted? Is this something that he helped develop, or what was the process for getting this developing this? Thank you. Can you give us some background on this, Chris, without I can. giving away the? Sure. Uh, the police department visited the schools. Uh, they came up with a list of items that they suggested we take care of uh, to strengthen the security of the buildings. This is not the entire list, but it is a good portion of the items that they recommended. Um, I can't really get into specifics. School security is one of those items, even at school committee meetings, they discuss in executive session. Right. Um, but there are items, uh, you know, door locks, um, additional cameras, items like that that, that we'll be using. There's others as well, but uh, you know, again, I, I hesitate to get into too much detail. Thank you very much. 
Any other questions? All in favor, signify with the red card. Thank you. Opposed? One. Abstentions? Zero. Six G passes 137 to one with no abstentions. In our final motion six H, I don't think we've ever had an H after a motion, but we're breaking new ground here. Move that the town appropriate eighty thousand dollars to pay costs of a van for the council on the aging, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. And to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to section 20, uh, chapter 44, section 7, 1 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium Received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the costs of the issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Once again, Selectman Stanley. Okay, this motion uh, borrows to pay for a new van for the Council on Aging. Uh, the current van uh, dates from 2007, has mileage over 50,000 miles. Uh, this is a planned upgrade. Borrowing for this will be within the levy. Um, the current van, I know, is in rough shape. Uh, the floor is rusted out on it uh, in sections, and it's also been increasing in repair costs over the past several months, so um, it's a needed upgrade. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. So Article 6H passes 137 to 0 with one abstention. Thank you. Moving along. Article 7. Article 7 reads, to see if the town will vote to transfer 23,000 from the Community Preservation Act Historic Preservation Set Aside to the Hadley Cemetery Committee for the Preservation and Restoration of the Historic Gravestones in Hockenham Cemetery, 1767, located between 191 and 299 Hockenham Road, Hadley Mass, 01035, in accordance with the proposal presented in the August 27th meeting at the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee. Set expenditures to be conducted within two years of the date of the 2018 Fall Town Meeting, November 1st of 2020, or unspent funds will be automatically be returned to the appropriate CPA fund by that date, or to take any action relative thereto. This is recommended 5-0 by the select board, it's recommended 3-0 by the finance committee, and it's recommended 9-0 with no abstentions by the Community Preservation Act committee. A motion for this article reads, move that the town transfer 23,000 from the Community Preservation Act Historic Preservation Set Aside Funds for preservation and restoration of the historic gravestones at Hockenham Cemetery. It's located between 191 and 299 Hockenham Road, had the mass 01035. In accordance with the proposal presented at the August 27th, I believe that's this year, right, David? 
2018 meeting of the Hadley Preservation um, Act Committee said expenditures be conducted within two years to the date of the 2018 fall town meeting, which is tonight. So that date will be November 1st, 2020, or unspent funds will be automatically returned to the appropriate CPA fund by that date. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. I will call on the CPA committee to speak to this article if they so desire, or if there's any questions. Andy's the chair. We want the cemetery committee. Oh, cemetery committee, even better. I'm Alan Weinberg, uh, cemetery committee chair, and uh, I want to thank the CPA committee for helping us with this. Uh, the town of Hadley owns and operates five historic and very beautiful town cemeteries, but many of the uh, older stones in the cemeteries are have fallen or in need of restoration. We're asking, uh, we, have, we have a plan for the Hockenheim Cemetery which was provided for us through the generosity of the Thayer family. And we'd like to proceed with uh, implementing that plan and that would uh, require uh, using the uh, $23,000 from the CPA money to uh, get this done this year. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions? Somewhere Fred Oakley would be proud of this argument. Um, Michelle? Michelle Harwood, 16 Barstow Lane in Hockenham Village. I would just like to mention that our last meeting of the Hockenham Villagers Association the Thayers outlined what this plan would look like, who the expert is that is going to be doing the work, how happy they were with the results so far, and the entire village association thought it was a really good idea. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, all who support this article, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Any abstentions? Motion for Article 7 passes 137 to 1 with no abstentions. Article 8 is also a CPA article. Article reads, to see if the town will transfer $12,000 from the community preservation Historic preservation set aside to the Hadley Cemetery Committee to conduct a study of possible rest restoration and conservation work to the historic town owned cemeteries to include Plainville, Russellville, North Hadley, and Old Hadley Central Section cemeteries in accordance with the proposal presented in the August 27th meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Said expenditures to be conducted within two years of the date of the 2018 fall town meeting, November 1st, 2020, or unspent funds will be automatically returned to the appropriate CPA fund by that date, or to take any action thereto. Select board recommends this 5-0, Finance Committee recommends it 3-0, Community Preservation Act Committee recommends it 9-0. The official motion reads, move that the town transfer $12,000 from, excuse me, from the Community Preservation Act Historic Set Aside Funds to conduct a study of a possible restoration and conservation work to the historic town-owned cemeteries to include, include Plainville, Russellville, North Hadley, and Old Hadley cent Central Section cemeteries in accordance with the proposal presented in the August 27th meeting of the Community Preservation Act. Said expenditures to be conducted within two years of the date of the 2018 Fall Town Meeting, November 1st, 2020, or unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate CPA fund by this date. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Thank you. Once again, this is the cemeteries. I'll entertain any questions. Chairman. So 
unlike Hakanam, the other cemeteries do not yet have a plan or a survey of uh, what exactly needs to be done to restore the gravestones. And this $12,000 will help us uh, hire a uh, professional gravestone uh, conservator to uh, take a look at the cemeteries and uh, tell us exactly what needs to be done and give us an estimate of how much that would be. And, and after that, we'll be back to the CPA for help with actually implementing that probably next year. And it's been, oh, I should add that it's been several years, actually many years, since this kind of work has been done in the cemetery, going back to Fred Oakenstein. Thank you, Mr. Weinberg. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify with the red card. Thank you. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Article 8 passes unanimously. <laughs> Article 9. Article 9 reads, to see if the town will vote to transfer $26,000 from the Community Preservation Historic Preservation set aside to the Board of Directors of the North Haddon Congregational Church for additional restoration and conservation work of the steeple and roof area of the church, located at 12 Mount Warren Road, Hadley, Mass. 01035, in accordance with the proposal presented in the August 27th meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Set expenditures to be conducted within two years of the date of the 2018 Fall Town Meeting, November 1st, 2020, or unspent funds will be automatically returned to the appropriate CPA fund by that date or take any action thereto. This is recommended 5-0 by the select board, 3-0 by the finance committee, and it's recommended by the Community Preservation Act committee, 8-4, one against with no abstentions. The motion for Article 9 reads, move that the towns transfer $26,000 from the Community Preservation Historic Preservation set aside to the Board of Directors of the North Hadley Congregational Church for additional restoration and conservation work of the steeple and roof area of the church, located at 12 Mount Warren Road, Hadley, Mass. 01035. In accordance with the proposal presented in the August 27th meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee, said expenditure is to be conducted within two years of the date of the 2018 Fall Town Meeting, November 1st, 2020, or unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate CPA fund by that date. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? And would somebody like to speak to this? <coughs> CPA committee? Uh, Grace Bozeski, 32 Hocker Road, Hadley. I may trustee of the church. I just want, first of all, I wanted to correct the address. It's 243 River Drive. It's not no more. I didn't think it was, but 243 River Drive. All right, well, we, before we vote on it, I'll reread it with the correct address. Go ahead. It's within the scope. Does anybody have any questions? Because you're not you're not changing the article. You just it was it's a it's an error in the printing. Okay. Is there any questions to the content of the motion for Article Nine? Seeing none. All who support the motion for Article Nine, please signify with your red card. Thank you. Any opposition? None. Any abstentions? One. So, motion for Article 9 passes 137 to 0 with one abstention. Moving on to Article 10. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Department of Public Works to have primary responsibilities 
for the operation, management, and care of the town cemeteries and to amend the vote of February 28, 1928, Articles 30 and 31, so that it shall read as follows. Voted the town authorized the select board to appoint a cemetery committee of five members, each to a term of three years, and further authorized the committee to advise and assist the Department of Public Works in the operation, management, and care of the town cemeteries, including but not limited to the sale of lots or take any action relative thereto. Select Board recommended this 4-0 with one abstention. Finance Committee recommends this 3-0. The motion reads, move that the town authorize the Department of Public Works to have primary responsibility for the operation, management, and care of the town cemeteries and to <coughs> excuse me, amend the vote of February 28, 1928, Articles 30 and 31, so that it shall read as follows. Vote that the town authorize the select board to appoint a cemetery committee of five members, each for the term of three years, and further authorize the committee to advise and assist the Department of Public Works in the operation, management, and care of the town cemeteries, including but not limited to the sale of lots. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? It's been moved and seconded. I will call on Selectman Phil to speak to this. I'll let the cemetery uh, chair go into details, but basically all this does is form formalizes the relationship between the DPW and the cemetery committee, which has been a very informal arrangement over the years and uh, relied on a lot of volunteerism. is something that the cemetery committee, the past cemetery committees and the present cemetery committees uh, very much want to have happen. We've had discussions with EDW and the town administrator and uh, worked out uh, the respective roles and responsibilities. Uh, in 1928, the uh, town uh, constituted the current cemetery committee and gave them the responsibility for care and operation of the cemeteries. And then in 2009, when DPW was charter was accepted by the town, the language in that charter uh, essentially gives the DPW the authority to run the cemeteries as well as other you know, buildings and grounds and public works facilities. Um, but the language is a little bit ambiguous and has never fully been fully implemented. It's been, as David uh, mentioned, the operation of the cemeteries really relied on a somewhat informal relationship uh, and cooperation uh, which has been great between DBW and, uh, and the cemetery committee. But go, um, going forward, we really need to uh, nail it down and in order to ensure that the operations of cemeteries are done in a consistent way and that there's continuity, uh, we need to put the DBW in charge of the operations and give the cemetery committee an advisory and an assistant role. So we're not, the cemetery committee is not going to be going away or being abolished, but we're just going you know, to clarify that we're the assistant and to give advice and assistance as we can to the DPW. The DPW will be the one to control the budget and, uh, and make some decisions about how things get done there, the final decisions. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor of the motion for Article 10 signify with the red card. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Article, the motion for warrant for October 18, 2018 and incorporated by references herein. Do I have a motion? With the correction. So the correct subsection, I will read it, is going to be 19.2.7. Do I have a second? Thank you. I'll call on James Maxmowski, uh, Chairman of Planning Board. Thank you. The Planning Board does not recommend this article. And just to correct 
what uh, the moderator said. This was not presented by the plan. This is not, the planning board did not author, author, author this article. It came from the Board of Selectmen. Um, we don't know where it came from because we didn't have that information. We originally thought it was a petition article, but the town clerk informed me it was not a petition article, so the second can address where it came from. Anyways, a little bit of history. The Village Overlay District was created in 2001. There was a committee of the Historical Commission, business people, townspeople, and planning board. And they present, they got together and from the bridge, from the Coolidge Bridge to the bike path, was the area of concern. How can we maintain this area to have a colonial appearance? And it was decided to have horizontal siding. If windows were going to be on there, it should be like double hung windows or windows with mullions. And the roofs should have a shingle appearance. It could be brick siding and stuff like that. Prohibited ex um, exterior appearances were vertical siding and roofs that did not have a shingle appearance. This article is really to allow standing metal seam roofs. The planning board, and myself included, have no problem with a standing metal seam roof. However, it is not a colonial appearance. It is up to this town meeting. If you want to maintain the colonial appearance from the bridge to the bike path, then probably shingle, shingle appearance is important. And the reason we say appearance is the plant zoning bylaws do not have authority to regulate materials of construction, only appearances. So we're saying, that's what we keep saying, appearance throughout the bylaw. They make asphalt shingles, they make roofs that are made of metal that have a shingle, slate roofs, those all have a shingle, can have a shingle appearance. So it's up to you. Do you want to keep the colonial look or, you know, the standing metal, metal seam in many people's opinion, is not a colonial appearance, and that's what this is about. Thank you. Jane Nevin Smith. Hi, Jane Nevin Smith, 16 Sunrise Drive. What this article is, and I really don't know who put it on, I think it was the select board, but in any event, if you look at the town center right now, the town hall has a standing scene metal roof, the First Church has a metal seam roof. The Hooker School has a metal standing seam roof. Any building that replaces their roof can use standing seam. New buildings cannot. So this would just equal the playing field. And everyone agrees that a standing seam metal roof is the best way to build right now. Thank you. Questions, comments? Cool. William Dwyer from the Planning Board. Um, <clears throat> so there are a couple of things. Some people may be aware that uh, the original design for the Senior Center did call for a standing seam roof. And I believe that is part of the genesis of how this article got to the Planning Board and got to town meeting. However, at a meeting of the Planning Board, the owner's project manager for the senior center said that they are no longer recommending or requesting a standing seam metal roof for cost. They are planning to go with shingles. So that was part one of why I voted against recommending this. The second part is that uh, the bylaw as a whole probably is ripe for a re-examination. Uh, for example, as uh, Jim mentioned, the bylaw prohibits uh, vertical siding. Half my house is board and bat and siding, and if you know what my house looks like, you would not, you would agree, it, it looks pretty colonial. Uh, but board and bat and siding is vertical and would not be allowed under the bylaw. So I think what we really need to do is have a, uh, you know, get back to some of the roots of why we adopted the design criteria for the village center overlay. And uh, we can revisit that. Uh, and take it up as a whole and not piecemeal. Okay, Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. Uh, first, I want to thank um, Planning Board Member Maximowski for explaining what's different about this language because this doesn't give us a before and after, only an after. And I'm going to request that 
we get a summary like that for each of the articles affecting um, the, the various zoning changes that are being suggested um, as they come up. And number two, just to comment that I don't live in the historic center district, but I do live in a historic district. We put on a new roof in a house that was built in 1743, and we did not even investigate the pricing of single seam metal roofs because we just felt it was incompatible with the aesthetics of the district. So having heard that explanation, I will be voting against. John Moore Street and 45 Roosevelt Street. I have a little question about the difference between a single seam metal roof and say an old tin roof, which can fit into an historic district, and I have a comment as to that. Uh, uh, what kind of a roof? Like an old tin roof. If you go up to Cummington, a lot of very old houses have metal roofs on them, but not the modern. Yeah, but they have the, 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 the A lot of the old metal roofs in town had a shingle appearance to them. There's some old barns that have it. And even some of the roofs that were replaced in the center um, had a metal roof that had a shingle appearance to it. They were re they were replaced with standing metal seam roofs. Okay. So the original roof did have a like I said. It's not a matter of the materials of construction because they do make metal roofs that have a shingle appearance to them. They're a little bit strange looking, but they still have a basic shingle appearance. Um, I generally support the appearance of like, an older architecture in town, but. To me, metal roofs are not grading. The other thing is that in the long run, even though they're very expensive to put on now, they require a lot less work. And I wish 21 years ago I had put a metal roof on when it was more affordable because I'm looking at the roofing before the 25 year point. So when you look at the long term cost to the town, for the senior center, that's something to consider. And just another comment too, sometimes with the um, I support the historic district, but sometimes we gussy up buildings with colonial um, attributes like the Franz Market that don't really belong on the building or hold too fast to it. And I, I don't think um, that's always a good idea. Thank you. Tony by the Cold Spring. I don't think it's a small point that we still don't have a, uh, any background about where this, where this petition came from. Nobody seems to be advocating for it specifically, so I don't think it's, uh, it makes sense to vote for something that changes something, uh, changes a plan that's been in place if, if, uh, without any real background of, uh, as far as the thinking why, why this was done and, and where it came from. So is anybody, anybody who put this on willing to stand up for it or advocate for it? Apparently, Chairwoman Chuckwell is going to comment. The select board put it on for the reason of the senior center and not being able to, at the time they were going to do a, a seam metal roof. Um, now they've changed it to shingles, so that's how it all came about. It stayed on the uh, warrant and people like the idea that we would be able to have that option if we needed to for other buildings in the center of town. I'm in favor of this, um, and I'm, I'm a history major, I'm on a historical society, and I'm very uh, invested in making sure that the new library has a nice historic look to it. Um, but. The, the, the metal seam roofs that are on the town uh, buildings right now don't bother me. They don't look bad. And and I think back when I we moved into my house at Bay Road, which is over 200 years old, that house, it had a metal roof. It had the old tin roof. That tin roof, folks, is not colonial. In fact, I don't know that even shingles are colonial. Three shakes are, and I guess that looks like shingles. But the town center doesn't even, is not mostly colonial. It's mostly, it's historic. But it's the 19th century, not the 18th century. And, uh, you know, things have changed. And, and uh, I think it's uh, okay for us to make these changes if they're, especially if they're practical. I mean, if it happens anything, it's a practical town. And the standing steel 
can't be cheating with metal. Roof lasts practically forever. Those, those tin roofs that I had in my house, 80 years old before I had to replace them. And uh, that's because we didn't take care of it. Though. But uh, I'll, I, I think this, this is a good thing to do. And I would advocate for it. I did not put it on, I was not the petitioner, but I like the idea. I also understand that, you know, there are, you know, it might be better to do it in a comprehensive way to get the whole, uh, the whole package of things. But this is something that could help us right now. If, if, if the board could have done especially a town building, it would save money but in the long run. Thank you. 10 I heard 16 goes to drive, building commissioner. Um, Certainly when I drive up through uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, which we all think is colonial uh, New England, we see standing seam roofs. It certainly is uh, a huge benefit over all the old roofs. Certainly back in the colonial days, they didn't have the ability to put on uh, standing seam, but they did through the 1800s start getting into a metal roof system. Uh, the, the benefits, what we're trying to do is actually save the town money. If we have, if we have to replace roofs on municipal buildings, and you've seen all the ones that we've done so far are standing seam. The reason is our prevailing wage is so expensive, we want to put on materials that will last. And certainly standing seam roofs will last for an extremely long time. The other great benefit to them is solar. The great thing about them is that you clamp your solar panels on. You're not putting holes into your, your, your roof with a shingle. Uh, there are some metals out there that look like shingles, but they kind of look odd and they're penalized. So there are problematic issues with um, the seams leaking. I, I think we, yeah, we all want to see some colonial, I think that the buildings do look colonial. They also look very handsome, in my opinion, with the metal seam roof, We've done <coughs> the town halls and everything else. So it is just trying to get everything in some type of uh, uniformity within the center of town. It's not, you know, opposing colonial uh, appearance, but it's just trying to save us some money and do something that's uh, looking forward and going forward with some of this stuff. Okay? Thank you. Diane Stengel, 43 Breckenridge. Um, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, we were talking about, again, just to get my sense, sense of this, uh, we were talking about the shingle appearance as being a previous requirement and now we're talking about all roofs shall be pitched, et cetera. There's no mention in the current proposal of single seam roof or whatever, I'm not even sure I'm using the right term, but it just seems like you could have any kind of roof material that you cannot specify, if I understand it yeah, correctly. Um, so I'm just wondering what this does for us that still preserves a sense of the, of the overlay district, if, if there is wording in here that does that. Um, and I'm missing it. <laughs> the bylaw as written simply takes out the words that were in the prior bylaw of Nineteen point two point seven currently reads: All roofs shall be pitched. Minimum pitch shall be three-inch vertical rise for twelve-inch horizontal run. Roof coverings shall provide the appearance, exterior appearance of a shingle appearance. Methods and materials are not specified. That is the sentence that has been removed. The roof, all roof coverings shall provide the exterior appearance of a shingle appearance. Methods and materials are not specified. That's the only difference between what's in the bylaw today and what is being proposed, is that one sentence being removed, the shingle shall, roofs shall have a shingle appearance. The rest of the bylaw, or that one little section, is the same. The rest of the bylaw, which is two and a half pages long, 
covers other appearances and other colonial things. So it isn't like one little section covers the entire description of the village overlay. It's two and a half pages long. That, none of that else is being changed. Thank you, Jim. Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. I've heard arguments, very good arguments on both sides of this issue. Um, but I think that it's been important for the planning board to be here and hear a sense of the town and the concerns about this. And I personally like the idea of coming back rather than just, you know, kind of fixing things piecemeal since there's no urgency right now about a specific building that needs this roofing. I'd like to see it come back possibly as part of a bylaw that would in examine, you know, this balance of maintaining colonial appearance and saving the town money. I think this debate is good, but what it, what's not good is the Board of Selectmen should have approached the planning board about this issue. And then we hold a hearing, you hold forms, and you get information. This, this is good information, but this should be done at a forum and at a hearing of the planning board, not at a town meeting and to delay our business at a town meeting. One of the things that bothers me when I see a standing seam roof on a historic old building like the one I live in from 1743 is the garish colors, and I'm wondering if when the planning board does revise this ordinance, this bylaw, um, if, they, if it's within your purview to address what are permissible colors. I believe, I believe it is within reason. We'd have, to expect, we'd have to investigate exactly what the limits are. You just can't say you can do this, you can't do that, but there are some reasonable limits on what we can impose on colors. Thank you, Jim. I don't want to go on this too long, but I have to say, garish colors. Have you ever looked at the Deerfield? Some of the color, the colors on the buildings in Deerfield. The colonial colors were garish. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Morris, Freeman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I'd like to ask the people involved in the senior center building. If this is pressing, if there's a change, it's possible there might be a change in the plan when they have to break ground. Um, if it is pressing, it's possible we could pass this tonight and revisit it and refine it by Springtown meeting at, at Springtown meeting. The first plans for the senior center are for roof. Thank you, Jane. Well, so the answer. Any others? Seeing none, all in favor of the proposed changed to. I'll reread the motion real quick. <laughs> Move that the town amend the zoning bylaws of the code of the town of Hadley as delineated in Article 12 of the special town meeting warrant for October 18th, 2018, and incorporated by references herein. All in favor signify with your red card, please. Thank you. Opposed? Opposed? Op I mean, uh, abstentions. is 98 for 30 against with 11 abstentions. Article passes.
Oh, I counted the 30, 30 nays and the 11 abstentions. Oh, that's, that's okay. well, you, you cannot assume that some people did not put up their hands in the three hours. You have to count. What's that? Here? What? Do I have eight people that question the vote that, or the counts that I took? That's one. Stand up. I know who you are. <laughs> All right, perfect. Everybody sit back down. We can stay here a little while longer. And I and I am going to dock the select board uh, at the next annual town meeting for 25 minutes for bringing this article up. I've done it in the past. I'll do it again. Okay. Who, who would like to be a counter? Um, Tim, please, thank you. David Waskevitz, could you please count me a counter too?
The head table, the column to my right, and the back table, you can put your cards down. The column, we're waiting for these two sections. Thank you, everybody. Now, if you are opposed to the bar motion for Article 12, signify with your red card, please. We're not going to count the abstentions because for a two-thirds majority, if you abstain, it's like you're not voting. It doesn't count to two-thirds. So the official vote, and I would like to thank all my counters, is 85 people said yes and 39 people said no. So it does pass a two-thirds majority. Article 13 is a planning board article and it is going to be passed over. Article, um, actually, Jim wants to talk about all of these and then make a recognition. Go ahead. On Article 13, we will make a vote. We're going to pass it over. I want to explain why so that everybody understands. The, there's two basically marijuana zoning articles on here. One is the actual bylaw, which is this one. And then the very last one, which is to extend the moratorium until June of 2019. The reason we want to pass over this article, the planning board has been working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on crafting the marijuana bylaw. We're working on that roughly since the bylaw, since, since the uh, state voted to approve adult marijuana usage. The Piney Valley Planning Commission has been drawing one up. Several towns have adopted some form of it. We made a few changes to it to kind of tailor it to Hadley. It was sent to KP Law, which is town council, for review. They made a bunch of changes to it. Not all the changes that were made that we agree with, not that they were wrong, but we just don't know why they made the changes. So rather than put something in today that we don't think may be the best for Hadley, we're going to work, continue to work on it. Attorney Bart has agreed to come to one of the planning board meetings at a date to be announced, where he will work with us and explain why this was done, why we can do this, why we can't do that. So at the Springtown meeting, we'll be looking at this again. So this past part of the past work for that reason. Is that the same with articles 14 and 15? No. Okay. All right, so we're going to pass over Article 13. Article 14, once again, it is a plain board article. So I'll have Jim. Yeah. 
Let me get to it. <laughs> so I'll have Jim uh, Maxwellski, Chairman of the Planning Board, speak to Article 14. This is a general bylaw. This is not a zoning bylaw. This is a majority vote to pass, not a two-thirds majority to vote to pass. This bylaw regulates how many marijuana retail, adult marijuana retail establishments can be um, based in habit. And it's based on the uh, basically package store sale, if I am correct. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So now that it's 20% of the package stores in the town. We can have that many um, fraction retail establishments. So I, I, we have, I think we have seven, seven pack, seven pack of stores that have it, licenses. So therefore, it comes out to be something like twenty percent of seven is like one point three or one point four. You round up that figure to two, so we can have two retail establishments as a number of retail. Package stores increases or decreases, then the retail staff, retail marijuana staff, establishments will likewise fluctuate. Um, the state originally, we were going to put this into the zoning bylaw. The attorney general recommends that this particular item be a general bylaw for whatever reason. Maybe Joel can explain it better because that's, we're just going back to what we recommended by the attorney general. Okay, Joel Byer. Mr. Moderator, Joel Byer, Town Council. I just want to add one thing. Uh, everything Jim said, of course, was accurate, but the reason for the 20% is um, putting it in a bylaw, and I can talk in a second about general zoning, is that for any community that wants to limit, limit it to fewer than 20%, you need a ballot question. So by putting it, by putting it at 20%, um, then you don't need the ballot question about uh, those important information that people have. As to general zoning, it could be invoked. A number of towns were putting it, some towns started putting it in the zoning bylaw, and then some towns put it in the general bylaw, and the attorney general approved those. So it just seemed to make sense to put it in the general bylaw since it only requires a simple majority. Okay, Jim, you want to speak? Just to be clear, that would then require, will allow Hadley to have a minimum of two retail establishments, but the, the Board of Selectors, I believe, could always decide to have more than that, or is it only two? Back, okay, that's, okay, so they could only have two. Are we passing over, right? No. We're not that. I was told we were passing over number 14. No, that was mine. Okay. And that's the Board of Selectors' uh, decision, not ours. Okay, so. The motion for Article 14 is going to read, move that the town amend the bylaws of the Code of the Town of Hadley as delineated in Article 14 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18, 2018 and incorporated by the references herein. What happened? You want me to read the whole section? Okay. All right. Article 14. See if this... Town will vote to amend Chapter 36 of the General Bylaws of the Town of Hadley to include a new section. Section 36-3, limited on the number of adult use retail establishments. The number of adult use marijuana retail establishments permitted to be located within the Town of Hadley shall not exceed 20% of the number of licenses issued within the town for the retail sale of alcoholic beverages, not to be drunk on the premise where sold under Chapter 138 of the General Laws. For the purposes of determining this number, any fraction shall be rounded up to the next highest whole number or take any action thereto. Now I'll read the motion again. Move that the town amend the bylaws of the code that the town has as delineated in Article 14 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 18, 2018, and incorporated by the references herein. Do I have a motion? Move it. I have a second. Second. Okay, discussion. Edward Matusco, 116 Staff HB. I don't know if I should address the planning board. Or well, you'll address me and they'll answer. Okay. Um, Maybe. <laughs> uh, just a wild prognostication. 
assume we lose three package stores. Will the town have the authority to close down one of these establishments? I would say no. Or four, or eight. We would have to get down below um, 1.00001 or something for them to even consider that. And uh, that's probably, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. The answer is no. Once they have the license, the, the only way they would lose it is through, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be a, by a package store. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah, it, it, would the town have the authority to close down uh, no, a retail no. marijuana? No, uh, Mark. So it becomes a, uh, once they would have been legal when they got the license and the fact that the landscape shifted would not deprive them of the license. So they, they would get to keep the license. And when I should have been the cargo sit up the street. I just have a point of order. Mr. Moderator, must you read each article twice? And you just read it once to say all the times. I read the article, especially because there's language in these, and then I read the motion. Sometimes there's a difference between the two. Can you just read the motion? Absolutely. Mr. Phil. So the select board uh, a few months ago voted unanimously to limit the number of retail marijuana licenses in town to two licenses. Our goal was to decouple the uh, number of marijuana retail licenses from liquor licenses, so we didn't have to use the ratio. My understanding is that in order to do that, we need a ballot vote and a town meeting vote. Uh, so that was our goal uh, as a board, because uh, we would like the ability to increase and decrease liquor licenses without having to worry about impacting marijuana licenses and possibly increasing those. So that was our, our, our goal as a board. As a board. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get that together in time for this town meeting. So uh, maybe something we can work on for springtime meeting. But uh, we wanted to err on the side of caution uh, rather than just kind of open the floodgates to, to unknown territory. So. Hi, Fair 179 Hospital Road. I'm a little confused about what a, a yes or no vote means. Yes means it would be limited to 20%. Does a no vote mean it would be no limit? I just wasn't sure what, if this was defeated, what that means. Well, that's the question. Yeah, I don't know if that's what it means. Yeah, that's what it means. That's correct. So a yes vote would put this into the bylaw where it would set a maximum of 20%. And if this bylaw was voted down, then it wouldn't exist. That's correct. There would be no limit at this time. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of Motion for Article 14, please signify the red card. Thank you. Opposed? One, two, three. Thank you. Four. Any abstentions?
this stuff we did complement A had a lot of these assignments on this. They were all incorporated into this prior to the No, they weren't. Okay, excellent. The select board has made has decided to pass over Article 15, so we'll move on to 16.